up until this point, we've been talking about lots of things, waves, sound, periodic waves, uh, and even something recently called standing waves. And I want to be able to use all of the, those ideas to explain basically how does a guitar actually produce the sound that we perceive and that we hear. Like when I just pluck this top guitar string, we hear, we basically hear one note. We think we hear one note. So like what's actually going on there to produce that particular note or that particular pitch? Well, let's think about it. If we are hearing a particular pitch or frequency, that's because the sound wave that's entering our ear, that, um, that longitudinal traveling wave, is oscillating at a particular frequency because pitch is related to frequency. So if we're hearing predominantly one frequency, that must mean it's being produced by something that's vibrating with that frequency, that's disturbing the air at a particular frequency. So when I, when I pluck that top string, that top string must be vibrating at a particular frequency. So it turns out, just when I pluck a guitar string once, what gets set up inside of there that creates the sound wave that we perceive as a particular pitch or frequency are standing waves. Now, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense based on what we've talked about so far to say that just disturbing material once creates a standing wave inside of there. Because up until this point, we said that to create a standing wave, you need to, dis you need to disturb a material periodically, introduce a frequency of disturbance, at a particular frequency that creates standing waves uh, with things that have two fix fixed ends, either creating a standing or either creating a periodic wave with a half of a wavelength that fits in the length, or a full wavelength that fits in this length, or one and a half wavelengths that fit in that length. And that only happens, what so far we've talked about is when we disturb a material at a particular frequency to create those particular length wavelengths. Now, if I wanted to introduce a periodic disturbance to a guitar string, I'd have to disturb it in a periodic way. You know, once a second, twice a second, three times a second. Uh, and if I were to do that, it's going to create uh, waves, periodic waves that move through here, bounce off this fixed end, reflect back, and we'd have periodic waves interfering with each other, hopefully to produce a standing wave. Well, it turns out, that the speed of the waves moving through the guitar string, this stretched tight guitar string, are really fast. And I can't vibrate my finger fast enough to produce a wavelength that's equal to half the wavelength of the length of the string, or the wavelength is a full wavelength fits here, one and a half wavelengths fit here. Uh, so I can't physically pick, uh, disturb the string fast enough to do that, but just disturbing it once turns out creates uh, not just one standing wave, not just two standing waves, but um, all the possible standing waves that are allowed on this length string. And that doesn't make, seem to make a whole lot of sense, but I want to kind of show you guys some evidence that there are those standing waves uh, set up inside of this string with a half a wavelength that fits in this length and a full wavelength and one and a half wavelengths and two wavelengths that fit on this length string. So let's just think, if there was a standing wave set up um, inside of this length of the string right here, um, there would have to be nodes and anti-nodes. Well, something that has, in this case, like two fixed ends, we know there would have to be at least two nodes, one on either side of the guitar. And so the first possible standing wave that could get set up inside of here would be one node on either end and an anti-node in the middle. And so we'd have the middle shaking back and forth uh, have a huge disturbance and that location stays in the middle and two spots in the end where there are, the string is not shaking much back and forth. And it turns out that when we strike a guitar string, the loudest frequency or pitch that we hear is created by that first possible standing wave. Well, I said there's more than one standing wave that gets created, so like what's the next possible standing wave that can get set up inside of this guitar string? Well, it would have not two nodes, but three nodes. It's gonna have a node on either side, a node in the middle, and then two anti-nodes uh, in between those. Um, and that would be where the middle was not vibrating significantly and the ends, and then in between there, they're gonna be vibrating significantly. So what would that sound like? Well, let's, let's think about it. If we have the, the loudest note that we hear, like that, has the middle vibrating back and forth, and it's there's a wavelength that is 
half the wavelength fits in this length. That means the full wavelength would be, you know, twice the length of the guitar string. So a fairly large wavelength. If the second possible standing wave has the length is equal to the length of the string is just equal to the wavelength, that means we've gone from a wavelength being of the sound wave, or sorry, wavelength that's created in, inside of here, is twice the length of the guitar string, uh, with a standing, the second possible standing wave with three nodes, now that wavelength is just equal to the length of the guitar string. So it's gone from twice the length to just the length, and so the wavelength that's moving through there in the second standing wave would be half as big as the first. And think about our wave speed equation, or our wavelength and frequency equation. Wavelength is equal to velocity divided by frequency. And if we uh, decrease the wavelength, that means the frequency has to increase. And if we uh, have the wavelength, the frequency is going to double, which means the sound produced by that second standing wave will have twice the frequency, uh, and it's going to have twice the pitch. It's going to sound higher. So what, what would that actually sound like? Well, if I just place my finger like really hard and press down on the guitar board fret like this, and I just pluck this, now I'm only allowing this half um, of the thing to vibrate back and forth. This is going to be, uh, if you listen, it's an octave above. And so it's a higher pitch. This is what the second standing wave, possible standing wave, sounds like. Now, if I plug this once, technically we're hearing the low pitch and the high pitch at the same time. Well, it turns out that that lower pitch, where the first possible standing wave is so loud, we can't really hear that second standing wave. So one way that we can hear that second standing wave is if I pluck this and they're both playing at the same time, if I want to kind of mute out that first standing wave uh, where it's, you know, the anti note is like really shaking back and forth in the middle, I could lightly place my finger in the middle of the string and that would basically dampen out the first standing wave because I'm basically taking away that anti note in the middle. But that second standing wave that had a note in the middle and the anti notes over here. So if I place my finger in the middle, I'm basically going to be, going to be taking away the first possible standing wave and leaving the second possible standing wave. Okay, evidence that both standing waves are actually there at the same time. So let's just see if we can listen. So I'm gonna pluck the string, lightly place my finger there, and you should hear the original note, uh, well, all standing waves. And then if I place my finger in the middle, it'll take away the first standing wave, and we still should hear that second standing wave, which will have like twice the frequency pitch because it's vib it's the wavelength is half the size. So here we go. Again. There we go. So we can hear that it, it got higher, not because I, I plucked the string a second time, it's because I took away the loudest low note and we could hear one of the higher notes there. Well, um, this could go on and on and on, but let me just show you a couple more. The next possible standing wave, uh, instead of having two nodes in the end or one node on each end and one in the middle, we would have a total of four nodes and that would be two on the end and then two evenly spaced inside of there. And so it turns out if I place my finger right there, that would be at a node location right there. So it's basically a third the length of the string uh, from the end. And so when I pluck that string, it's playing the first possible standing wave, the second possible standing wave, the third possible standing wave. And so to hear that third possible standing wave, um, if I pluck it and lightly place my finger there, um, it should dampen out the first and second standing wave because they either have, um, they don't have nodes there. They've got, they don't have, they don't have anti-nodes at the location, but they have somewhere between an anti-node and a node. And so my finger is gonna dampen out those sounds. So if I pluck it, we hear the pitch higher. That's that third possible standing wave. Um, second possible standing wave, third possible standing wave. You can hear that it's there. And I can keep going. The next possible standing wave, we could fit two wavelengths inside the length of the string. And so we'd have a total of, let's say, five nodes. One on either, uh, one on either end, and then a total of three more. One in the middle, 
and then two over here. And so if I place my finger a fourth of length of the string, we're gonna force a node at that location. And let's just sit here. What does that third possible, sorry, the fourth possible standing wave sound like? Sounds like that, right? So let me pluck the string, place my finger there, and so we can hear that it was there the whole time. But when we place our finger there, we're kind of dampening out everything else just to hear that possible standing wave. Okay, pretty cool, huh? So it turns out that when I play that one guitar string, we're hearing the low note, the higher note, the next higher note, the next higher note, and even higher ones. We're hearing all of those frequencies at the same time. And so a guitar string is not just introducing one pitch or one note, it's introducing all of those. Uh, the fundamental frequency, like the lowest possible frequency, um, and all the other frequencies related to the standing waves, and those are called harmonics. And so we're hearing the fundamental frequency and the harmonics, the different frequencies played by the standing waves of the string. And that's what makes one guitar string sound so rich. Okay, and so there's a lot going on with one string. And if you just, if you strum all of those strings, we're hearing the fundamental frequencies, the lowest possible frequency standing wave for all of those strings and all of their harmonics. So it's pretty rich, okay? So that's how stringed instruments produce sound. Um, standing waves, essentially. Uh, and how those standing wave gets gets created, that's a little bit more complicated than what we're gonna end up talking about, but we've now seen evidence that if we just disturb a material once, introduce like a, a sudden disturbance, what gets created in that material is a standing wave.